Hello everyone at uh, Book Place. This is Anthony Moirore, the author of Be Good for Good. And uh, today at uh, Book Place on Book Talk, we have a guest with us who is none other than, than Dr. Marni. For a quick introduction, who is Dr. Marni? Dr. Marni is an award-winning educator and author. She earned her doctorate in education and completed postdoctoral post studies at Harvard, uh, sorry, at Harvard after a successful and rewarding career as a high school special education teacher with 12 years as a university adjunct professor. She is the author of God Came to My Garage Sale. I don't know what is in that book, but we're gonna yeah, find out. A lot together. of good things. We're gonna find out together. So. Welcome, Dr. Mani. How are you? Hi, I'm great. Yes, wonderful. So please tell us, tell us something little about yourself. Tell us whom you are. So let's okay. let's get to find out whom you are. All right. Well, thank you, Anthony, for having me having me on Book Talk. Yeah. Um, I am an author, but really, I am just a regular person, just like you and me, okay. um, who chooses to live with goodness and love and compassion, despite any challenges mm -hmm. that come my way. Okay. And so I was, as you said in the intro, um, I was a high school special ed teacher for 35 years, 12 yeah. of those years as an adjunct professor in okay. Illinois, in the Chicago suburbs. Yeah. And after I retired, um, I chose to leave an abusive relationship. Mm -hmm. And when I did that, it's like my world opened up um, to just positivity and um, good things and situations and people came into my life. Yeah, and. Yeah. I uh, chose to move to the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. So I actually am uh, streaming right now from the US Virgin Islands in St. Oh. Croix. Mm -hmm. And I know you are in Athens, Greece, which is yes. very dear to my heart. I used to live in Greece as a child. Yeah. And um, would can't wait till I can get back there. But yeah. uh, anyway, yeah. I live on this island and I am. Um, I write books. I, I am the author of God Came to My Garage Sale, which I, I held up here. Yeah. It's a spiritual fiction. Mm -hmm. um, it won the 2020 Best Books Award, and it was endorsed by James Redfield, who wrote The Celestine Prophecy, okay. um, Yeah, as well as other books. And then I also, after that, um, ended up co-authoring four best-selling nonfiction anthology books. Oh, okay. And so you can find those on my website. And now I am a contributing um, author to some guest articles and magazines. And I've been asked to be on podcasts. And, you know, I'm selective about those podcasts. So your, your mission of goodness, mm -hmm. and I love your book, um, cool. Be Good for Good, that resonated with my soul. Oh. So that's who I am. Oh, good to know that. And uh, thank you very much for the compliment about my book. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So uh, please tell us, how did the book God came to my garage uh, say came to be? I mean, where did it all begin? Well, you know, for many years, I, I had a book in me and yeah. I would go to garage sales or, or have garage sales. And oftentimes I would just meet amazing people and have uh, great experiences. But in this particular garage sale, after I had lost everything, I had lost my home to foreclosure. Mm -hmm. um, I found that all my money was depleted. I even lost an adult child to parental alienation. Just my American dream was falling apart and yeah. I needed to have a garage sale just to make ends meet and move on in my life. And at this particular garage sale, I had some spiritual and miraculous experiences mm -hmm. happen to me. And then over a period of a couple of years, I really looked into and I researched 
near-death experiences and spiritually transformative experiences. And I became more open to God and the possibility that, you know, we are not just here to live and die, that there's more of a mission and a divine purpose to our being. And with all of that, I had even more experiences. And so I decided to put it all into a spiritual fiction Mm -hmm. and found that writing was very healing, but it also helped me relive some of those miracles that I experienced. Mm -hmm. And, and then, you know, one thing led to another and, and I, you know, I ended up publishing this book with Balboa Press, which is a division of Hay House. Um, I always was a fan of Hay House books because they touch on spirituality and they also touch on self-help and and trying to find the purpose in things. And and as a person who lives with goodness, Mm -hmm. love, compassion and honesty, I just, you know, said I needed to put this down on paper. In fact, writing the book almost took on a life of its own. Um, I didn't, I've always been a very driven person and, um, you know, just enjoy learning and enjoy creating. But um, writing this book was, was just so um, cathartic, you know, therapeutic for me. And, and then now it has opened up doors um, to meet beautiful people like yourself, but also just to, to, handle my own uh, feelings and and emotions and experiences by by writing okay thank you very much so yeah. you say it's a spiritual novel yes and it being a novel but it's telling a story of your life something that you've experienced in life right it was definitely inspired by true experiences not only my experiences but hundreds and hundreds of accounts that I have heard of other people. And so, yes, it's a spiritual fiction, Mm -hmm. meaning it's, you know, got some embellishment and made up situations, but definitely there's, it was inspired by true experiences. Oh, wonderful. And what are these experiences? If you can just tell us a few. Of oh my gosh, there are, there are many. Yeah. I actually in my book have 13 vignette chapters that are devoted to different experiences. But, you know, it starts out with dancing dragonflies when I was going out to my cul-de-sac, looking at my home to basically say goodbye for the, for the last time. Um, I was serenaded by one and then five and then 10 and then 50. Just, it seemed like countless dragonflies surrounded me. Um, I call that chapter dancing dragonflies. And I have since researched that phenomenon Mm -hmm. and, and learned that this has happened to other people. Um, So, and it was, when I have these various experiences, the dragonflies was just one of them, but everything seems to go in slow motion. And, and I've heard of that when people have survived death and had an experience where they have gone to heaven or they, um, you know, they, they talk about the whole notion that there is no time Mm -hmm. that there is slow motion and i actually experienced that and some other experiences were meeting different people at the garage sale that you know seem to um be very divine and Mm -hmm. and and i don't even remember them coming or leaving i actually remember one person levitating off the ground and and then out of the blue surrounded by a crowd of people that were intently listening to them you know it's a well that's what i saw that's what i saw okay and and you know, I pinched myself, you know, mm-hmm. is this really happening? Mm-hmm. And, and yes, it was in my, you know, in my experience, it was happening. Okay. Um, I've also write about experiences where I, um, through electronics, through TV or lights that mm-hmm. I get signals, or I've had a dream visitation yeah, where yeah. someone has come to me in a dream and, it is so real. And I remember every single detail, mm-hmm. you know, lots of times we'll dream 
And we might think, oh, we're just sorting out the, the woes of the day or something like that. And you don't always remember details. But with a few dream visitations I've had, I, I remember everything in detail. Okay. And then there's also just um, finding certain colored feathers or certain dated pennies on the ground mm -hmm. or, or red cardinals pecking at your, your window. Um, you know, if it happened once or twice, I would chalk it up to, oh, that's just a coincidence. But these, these experiences and phenomena have happened hundreds of times that I cannot, I can't dismiss it. Yeah. It really happened. Mm -hmm. And, and I, and it's changed well, I've always been someone who believed in goodness, love, honesty. You know, I'm a very empathetic person, but it just opened my soul to something even more deeper. And, and that's, those are some of the experiences I wrote about in my, in my book. Okay, thank you very much. Now, when you mention about dreams and you say that uh, they were so, uh, so clear in your mind. Yes. And, uh, what made you believe in them? I mean, are there some dreams that you dreamt and they become a reality of what you had seen in the dreams? Or you right. just uh, remembered some vivid dreams and uh, saw some significance in them? Well, the one in particular that I write about is a dream visitation from the character's mother. Uh -huh. And that um, it was during the time I was writing a chapter um, related to a relationship that she had with a man from India okay. and um, just a lovely gentleman. And they, they were very close. They had met in North Carolina when mm -hmm. they were both getting their master's degree. Luckily, my life partner, Rick, and I were able to go to India for a month and we spent time with this gentleman before mm -hmm. he transitioned to another side. So he was in his 90s. But yeah. that was exciting to have that come full circle. But during the time I was writing that chapter, that's the 13th chapter called the Sari, which mm -hmm. is the fabric that, you know, uh, is draped around uh, women. Um, mm -hmm. That when I had just finally completed that, that night, I had a dream visitation from my mother mm -hmm. and, or the, and, and then I used that experience to embellish it some so that it could be this character experiencing a dream visitation from their mother, but it was so clear. And it was um, it, my, my mother came to me in a time with her appearance, her age, her dress. That was during that time that she was in her, her master's program, where I, I didn't know her then, of course, but I saw a few pictures, um, but it was so clear that I could reach out and touch her and words were not spoken. It was okay. just all telepathy. It was all just an understanding. And, and you know, after reading, you know, I mean, of course, I woke up thinking, wow, what, what happened here? But yeah. after reading countless, um, you know, comments from people about them having dream visitations, I believe I was really visited. Yeah. And, and it, it was real and time went slow. It had a lot of the same characteristics that yeah. I have had when I've had these manifestations or intuitions. Okay, yeah. Okay, we get that. Now, yeah. uh, we've been joined by some people when we are just uh, sharing this. We sure. have uh, Christina. Thank you very much, Christina. Sorry that I will miss this live, but hopefully I can watch it later on. I think she was just passing by. And then we have Jonas Sol, who is saying, this is amazing. I think he's amazed by the story of your book. Now, yeah. Uh, the, the experience that you had at the garage sale, and uh, I mean, that's where you based your book upon. Yes. Uh, many more experiences. I mean, it, it, it was a point when you were kind of giving up, if I got that right. Yes. Yes, and, was, uh, I wasn't necessarily giving up, but it was definitely a very low point where I had lost all the safety and security and familiarity that I had come to know for decades. Yeah. And it, it all just came crashing down. A lot of it was on my choice. Um, okay. I, I really saw the 
person I was married to as the abuser he really is. Mm -hmm. And, and I, with my values could not stay in that relationship because it, it, you know, those, his values did not resonate with mine. Plus I had adult children that I, I needed to role model for. I don't want Mm -hmm. them to grow up thinking, well, even if things are negative and, and you are, you know, in a domestic violence situation, just stick it out. You know, you, that is your life sentence. I needed to role model for them that no people have a choice to live in love, peace, and harmony. And so, and so that is what I did, but yes, it was a, it was a low point. I don't think I've, I've never been one to give up. I've never been suicidal. I've never, I've never, gone to where I needed to turn to addictions of any kind to, to, Mm -hmm. to, um, soothe my soul, but I certainly wasn't a very sad point realizing that the, the world I thought I was living in this, this, uh, it turned out to be kind of like a fantasy world. And it was not, I was busy, very busy raising my family, working full time, completing an advanced degree, volunteering at, um, you know, worthwhile agencies, just, you know, being a neighborhood mom, you know, just spending time with my children and helping them grow and and trying to instill very good values into them. Um, And when that all came crashing down, you know, it was a shock. It was a shock to my system, but Mm -hmm. I am a survivor and um, all of us, uh, no matter what our our place in the world is, we all have challenges, and yes. many of us have been tested the past couple years here mm-hmm. um, with all sorts of challenges. So my challenges aren't just so unique. We all have our own challenges, but it's it's a matter of how we respond, not react yeah. to these challenges that makes or breaks us. And so I, I um, you know. I, I, it took some time to get back on my feet, but I am living a beautiful life now and um, feel safe and secure. I mean, I did move 2000 miles away from the abuser okay. that that distance really does help. But also, I'm thrilled to be in a location that I'm more in touch with nature, the ocean, the mm-hmm. rainforest, yeah. you know, the the amazing plants and animals that are are part of the world I live in every day. Mm, wonderful. So how many children do you have, if I may ask? Sure, I have two adult children. What age a girl you, and a boy. What ages were they by the time that uh, this was, was all happening? When it was happening, they were 20 and 23. Mm-hmm. So, and that was six or seven years ago now. Okay, and so I want to imagine that they had grown observing the abuse and uh, sure. some not so good things. So you had to come to that decision. Yes, yeah, I'm I, sure that they, but they also um, observed happy times too. You know, yeah. I I really went into this marriage very young, but very very optimistic and hopeful Mm -hmm. and seeing the good in people. And, you know, I misjudged, I really misjudged this time. And, Mm -hmm. and 27 years went by before my light bulb moment. And once that happened, of course, then I look back at so many different scenarios and realize that, that, you know, I had slowly been isolated, slowly been gaslit, slowly Mm -hmm. been made to believe that I can't handle things on my own and depended on on him for, you know, everything, including finances, which is, you know, for people that are abusive like that, money is money is a big controller, you Mm -hmm. know. But yes, my children did experience um, observing things and, but they have their own journey. They need to come to their own conclusions. I'm just hoping, um, that, that they can become aware of what parental alienation is and they can be aware of domestic violence so that they don't put themselves in that same situation in their adult life, because it is a very intergenerational phenomenon where, you know, um, we choose, you know, I, I, there are flaws that I have 
in my personality, being overgiving, mm-hmm. being uh, over accepting, yeah. uh, being loving to everyone that mm-hmm. really had put me in harm's way. Now I'm a lot more discerning about who I let into my world. Yeah, yeah. Um, but at the same time, that doesn't mean it dimin- diminishes the goodness that I feel for humanity. Okay. So, so yes, my children experienced that, but they also experienced a beautiful childhood in so many ways. And, and even though, you know, we, I lost the house to foreclosure and it was, it was all just, you know, um, not what we had planned. Mm -hmm. Um, they still grew up in a beautiful place with some beautiful experiences, but the bottom line is, you know, as adults, you know, I can just give love and they need to find their own way. I agree with yeah. that. Yeah. Yes. And uh, oh, if I may ask, who is the book dedicated to? The book is dedicated to my life partner. Okay. Um, and I also, and that is a good friend of mine that I've, uh, that was always there for me. And, and I was always there for him. And, and here we are sharing a life together in the Caribbean. But I also, if I, if I look at my dedication page, mm-hmm. I'm a little bit more general in, in what I say. So let me find that right here. Um, it's, uh, I, you know, I, I don't see it right here, but basically to friends and family, you yeah. know, just in general. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that uh, those people who are going to read it can always get something from it and apply it oh, to yeah. life and avoid Definitely. that you may have done along the way. Definitely. And my book is very affordable. It's not a money maker for me at all. In okay. fact, on the island where I live, my book is now in 20 locations on St. Croix, and I sell it for $10. Okay. And, um, and then the book, uh, God Came to My Garage Sale, can be found um, online mm-hmm. at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and the Balboa Press website for only $11.99, or if you're into the e-version, it's $3.99. Oh. So oh. it's a very affordable book. Um, for people to to read and uh, and be able to actually many people have contacted me after they've read it they realized wait a minute I had many of these same experiences Mm -hmm. and it helps them realize um, you know gosh maybe they were touched by divine I think all of us are we just have to be awakened to it yeah yes we are yeah yeah we are so I agree to what you have said earlier on about um, coming to the realization of where we are and making a choice of uh, uh, re- not not reacting, but how did you put it exactly? Responding, that respond, it's important yeah, how respond, we respond. How yeah. Right, we respond to the life's challenges. And, mm-hmm. and both you and I are very similar that we respond to life's challenges with love, compassion, honesty, and goodness. Yes. And goodness being, like I, I had shared with you before we our interview, that, you know, I use the term goodness all the time. Yeah. And... Oh, sorry. I think we have an issue with your connection. Let me just see. Oh, you, you, you had... Uh some uh, i mean you are oh, not, I didn't the hear internet that. okay sorry well that's i'm so sorry and i know you were alive but living on a caribbean island sometimes the internet gets you know is unstable yeah I but, but but basically i was saying that you know just like you i live with goodness and love and honesty and compassion. And that is a choice on how we respond. So Mm -hmm. it's better to respond and not just react. Yeah, sure, sure. We have the choice to make and an action to take. It's not only about uh, imagining things. And uh, as you say, your book uh, is going to help someone uh, see the extraordinary i mean see the not not the just the usual but look deeper into things when he see he or she sees the things happening around them and this is what i guess is gonna do right and in addition to that 
Yeah. You know, I'm co-author to four other books. Mm -hmm. And in those books, it's nonfiction. It's real. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I write about handling life's challenges with love and compassion. Okay. I do talk about surviving domestic violence, narcissist abuse, and parental alienation. And yeah. many people have contacted me to, re to say that was part of my journey, either as a child or as an adult. And, and so the message is, is kind of morphed, if you would say, into a message of just handling challenges with love and goodness. You can only control yourself. Yes. You can only control yourself. Other people will do good things or bad things and conduct their life the way they do, but you can't control that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can control how you respond to it, mm -hmm. and, and, but you can only control yourself. And yes. it's best to stay with your values mm -hmm. and, and live an authentic life. And in the meantime, you know, the writing in my um, in my books and in my magazine articles, yeah, um, yeah. that is done and it's healing for me, but it's also um, meant to inspire other people. In fact, even this month, May 2021, I have a guest article in um, a major magazine called Eden Magazine. Mm -hmm. And you can find, if you look at my website, you can find all the different places to find my writings. Okay. Um, and it's, it's meant to, to connect with other people. They might resonate with the message and they might uh, realize that this could be helpful for them. I think that survivors need to speak up, but we also... Um, need to inspire other people to just okay. give them encouragement to live the best life and get them out of a rut. Yeah. And, and we've all, you know, been in a very tough situation the last couple of years. And, you know, now it's time to see the light and move towards goodness. Yeah, sure. To be good for good. good be good for good. Yeah, thank yeah. you very much. And now that you talk about the challenges that we've all been through, uh, sure. the past couple of years. Let's just go slightly back to one year where everyone in the world was experiencing, and we are still experiencing these uh, tough times of the pandemic. Sure. Now, based on whatever you share on your books and your articles, how do you think people should take this pandemic and everything going on around? Well, that, that is a very good question. And without getting political here, yeah. I personally believe that what we are experiencing as a, a world is um, almost a war. I hate to use the war because that's so negative, but a challenge of light versus dark. Yeah. And I believe that there's been a lot of uh, darkness and there's been a lot of deceit mm -hmm. and corruption and fraudulent behavior okay. and it is now starting to come to light and little by little it takes a lot of time the planning of of all these malevolent forces and experiences took a long time it was years and years in the making by some very very dark negative souls okay. and so it's going to take some time for things to turn around. But I firmly believe that light and goodness will win over yeah. anything yeah. negative. So I believe it's a, it's a, it's a spiritual situation between yeah. dark and light. And I have great hope in humanity that goodness and honesty will prevail that, yeah. you know, the, the people that lie mm -hmm. and the people that, harm others mm -hmm. and like those of us that have experienced domestic violence yeah. we have yeah. dealt with people that are dishonest and want to harm you and mm -hmm. harm others yeah they eventually expose themselves the mask generally slips at some point mm -hmm. to, and, and you know even with a close friend that i had known for years in one instant over just a, a couple of minutes okay. a mask okay. slipped they and mean. you see someone for who they truly are. Yeah. And then that is where it's up to you to choose to react and get involved 
or respond. And I find it's best to just walk away and, you know, you're not out to uh, correct other people's behavior. You can only control yourself. So um, that's kind of how I handle things. So I believe that it's darkness versus light. That's good. A very good answer. And uh, the person watching this interview would be asking himself or herself, how am I supposed to respond to this situation? Because by the time that we wait for the mask to fall off, a lot of yeah. things are going by. So how yeah. do I respond right now? And things are happening. And it's right. Little... I don't have the answers. Yeah. I don't know that any of us have the answers to that. But for me, I would say how I'm choosing to respond. Uh, luckily, I'm surrounded in uh, with fresh air and sunshine. And, you know, I, I live in the rainforest and mm -hmm. on many acres. So I have the luxury personally right now in my life of yeah. being, you know, private and being kind of removed from the hustle and bustle of, you know, regular daily life, which I would have been involved in while I was still teaching and living mm -hmm. in the US Midwest. Mm -hmm. um, so I can't answer for other people, but I can say for myself that um, do what you need to do to be respectful of other people and their beliefs. Yeah. Um, you know, when it comes to, you know, if you have to wear a mask by law to go into the post office or something, you know, I will do that even though you know, I, I'm not necessarily a believer. The science shows that that that's, you know, not necessarily helping people. Um, but, you know, so stay true to your own values, but just try to stay optimistic. And so for me, I spend time every day in meditation, yeah. in prayer, mm -hmm. in being grateful and yeah. thankful. Mm -hmm. And I try to create, I try to um, bring joy to other people. I try to continue to learn and, um, and expand my horizons and those and stay positive and optimistic, believe in good. That's and it. so that is what I choose, how I choose to handle this, um, situation that we're in. And I do believe that, you know, the tide, the tide is turning where things will be changing for the better. Things will always change. Nothing stays permanent. Things right. Always change. And as long as we are optimistic and hopeful and do what we have to do, then we are we should believe that tomorrow is going to be a better day than yesterday was. I've always believed that because really to be able to survive some of the things that I have or or many other of your listeners and viewers to survive the life's challenges that they have had in their life, but to yeah. be able to see another day and mm -hmm. move on it does take um something in your spirit and soul that believes in optimism and positivity yeah sure now this book that you've written god came to my garage yeah. uh, garage sale and you've dedicated it to friends and family yeah. uh, what is the main message that you would want the reader of the book to get from this book the main main yeah, that's a good question. Um, I would say that no matter what life throws at you, yeah. to be open to the universe's signs and synchronicities, mm -hmm. because it's an amazing world out there. Yeah. And we all can be touched by the divine. So I guess my message is to slow down a little bit yeah. and, and reflect and pay attention because Chances are you've had signs and synchronicities your whole life, but didn't really, you know, put it together. You might have chalked it up to, oh, that's a coincidence. Oh, that was interesting that that happened at that time. But really, maybe there's more to it. And so I would just say the message is to be open. Okay, that's good. Be yeah. open. Be, be open. open. See the signs. Yeah. Think how to respond to them and take yeah. positive action that you should take. That's what yeah. I guess it should Definitely. be. Definitely, yep, you yeah. got it. You yeah. got it, Anthony. So, uh, see the sign, I, I, identify, put yourself in a position where you're able to identify the signs that are going, are directing you into a, a certain direction or to how to handle a certain situation. 
And, right. Uh, and even if things are uncomfortable, because yeah. leaving leaving relationships mm -hmm. or if you're in a toxic work environment, leaving a job or leaving uh, an area. In fact, I actually just helped um, a man, you know, domestic violence can happen to both men and women. It's not a gender specific situation. And I just helped a man who had made a decision to leave his abuser. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he decided I am going to move far away from this abuser. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, I think just getting messages like this can help people make choices and make changes in their life, even though it might be uncomfortable. And yeah. that's something you have to realize that change is hard for everyone. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, but sometimes change is what is needed to fulfill your goal and mission in life to to self actualize to be the best person you can be sometimes you need to change so this man who made a change in his life mm -hmm. will and that was very hard for him to do yeah. he will he will find freedom away from an abuser and then can slowly start to regain his strength and get back to the roots of the core of the wonderful person that he is yeah and i believe as i have been hearing stories here and there i believe there are a lot of people as you said not only women but also men yes. who are undergoing some situations where they are being abused at home at work or yes. anywhere else and they are having no idea of how they come out of it right and, um, yeah, so it's good for someone to come to the, to the realization that you have some uh, ability, that it's possible for you to make the changes that you need to change, to make in your life in order to be a better person tomorrow. So Right, and you know, there's definitely shock and there's definitely a period, and it could be, especially with some abuse situations, a long period of mm -hmm. being in survival mode because... Yeah. You know, people that have targeted you and, you know, for years, you gave them the supply that they needed to control and manipulate. They don't let their victims go easily. Sometimes they will continue to to harass you, stalk you, um, try to to because they can't control you anymore. They try to control what others think of you yeah, um, yeah. and they they can also take you to court or file charges against you that are not true only because you are forced to respond to it mm -hmm. and and then they can kind of keep you in that cycle yeah. and and there it's very sad for these people you know they are it's just very a very sad life for them but but so realize if you're talking to some of your viewers or listeners that are trying they realize okay i've got to get out realize that there's a, a period of shock because you know you don't expect someone that you have loved and you believed loved you would ever hurt you mm -hmm. but they do uh, a lot of people are very self-serving and, mm -hmm. and are mentally ill themselves they're not well and controlling and manipulating and mirroring your goodness is all they know they don't they 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 don't really have a positive you know uh fabric to their soul. Um, yeah. But, you know, like we talked about before, you can't control other people, but realize that you need to still stay vigilant. You need to do what you can to stay safe. Sometimes it is moving out of the situation physically. Yeah. That doesn't mean that the abuse ends, but at least it's a start. And, mm -hmm. and so you have, you are in survival mode, but after a while, all that negativity will dissipate and, it, and it'll make room for all the positivity. And you'd be amazed at the good people that will start to cross your path and good situations. A new job might open up that was much healthier for you. You might not have made as much money in the job, but mm -hmm. you might have been much more satisfied and um, felt more worthwhile. And, and that, you know, you can't put a price tag on some of these things. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. So uh, 27 years married, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
at what point do you think that, I mean, for how long do you think you were in this survival mode yourself before you made that move? Oh gosh, I would say, you know, because people with narcissistic tendencies tend to slowly and methodically gaslight you and isolate you and sort of set the stage with your friends and family and work and all that. Um, that is in the works for a long time. I think it takes a long time be because there are red flags which you know show you, wait, this isn't right, this isn't right. But we ignore those red flags for years because we just don't want change. We want our, you know, we had this dream of a perfect union and, you know, a fairy tale life, or we have children and we want to keep the stability of it all. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes people can't wait until the children are adults. Somehow I was fortunate that I didn't have to deal with custody battles and, mm -hmm. and visitations and all of that. I, I'm so thankful. I have met so many other men and women mm -hmm. that have horrendous times legally with all of that. Yeah. But so it's really hard to say when the light bulb, you know, went on, except when it finally really did go on, I yeah. basically had one week to escape my situation. One week. One week. <laughs> and, and, and many, you know, there are some wonderful resources out there. Yeah. Um, one very good resource is Narcissist Abuse Support with Tracy Malone. Mm -hmm. um, but there are so many other um, uh, great resources out there. There's another one um, with Duane with Dad Surviving Divorce mm -hmm. or Dr. Linda Martini Louie or the Sh uh, Shaman Sisterson or Melanie Tanya Evans or Le Lisa Romano. There's just countless people, the enlightened target. I mean, there's just so many different YouTube channels out there helping people mm -hmm. um, become aware and giving them strategies on what to do. And of course, all of them say, plan your escape, mm -hmm. you know, just plan it, take some time, get money in the bank, you know, just uh, slowly line up your, your move to a safe house of some sort. But in reality, most of us, that's hindsight because we are shocked to the core and all we know is to get out and to get out fast. And that was my situation. So even though probably the abuse, you know, I bet the abuse actually started before, before I was even married. Whoa. So I actually can go back and think of scenarios that are definite red flags that that if I if I wasn't so uh, motivated to get married and start a family, yeah, you know, and and these abusers mirror you because they want to be who you are. You are full of goodness and light. Mm -hmm. They are not. So then, if you say you like something, they say they like it. If, if, you know, if you want to do this, they want to do that. You know, they, they, they love bomb you in a way mm -hmm. that you think, wow, I met the perfect person. Mm -hmm. And then it's very easy for empathetic people to just kind of go with it and, and just ignore the red flags. And in my case, I ignored red flags from before getting married, mm -hmm. um, because of my inadequacy, my need, my low self-esteem, yeah. my, my trying to correct past generational situations because my parents were divorced. I wanted a perfect family to do this, yeah. to live the rest of my life. So I ignored all those things. But in my particular case, like I said, the light bulb was very, very clear. And within one week I escaped. Mm -hmm. But then again, you never really escape the abusers because not only um, do they continue to stalk you and abuse you whatever way they can mm -hmm. within yourself, you're tormented yourself. You know, mm -hmm. you, you, you kick yourself. Why did I let this happen? Mm -hmm. How could I let so much time go by? Am I going to find myself in another relationship like this? Mm -hmm. You know, what could I have done differently? Oh, my children, you know, I, and that's the biggest thing in my heart as my beautiful children. I do believe that 
even in these abuse situations that children need to have both of their parents in their lives. Children need their mother and father and extended yeah. family mm -hmm. and, and step families. They need everyone. They just need to know who they're dealing with so they can set boundaries for themselves and, and be able to carry on still true to their values. Yeah. But I believe, you know, that, you know, unless there's extreme cases of, mm -hmm. of actual abuse with parental alienation, you know, you're, you're there, there's, it's so subtle and, mm -hmm. and, and maybe not even visible to the eye. The abuse is so emotional that, you know, it does take years to acknowledge it and unravel it. Okay. And, uh, and, and then you need to find a way to, to deal with it. In my case, writing has been extremely therapeutic. And, okay. and luckily, I found a wonderful life partner. And I'm living in such a beautiful environment that every day I have so much to be thankful for. That's wonderful. That's very yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Now, the children around their 30s now, uh, how have they responded so far from the time that you made the, you made the decision and you took the move? Well, I think it's been very hard on them. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they they both have responded differently. I because of parental alienation, um, the loving, beautiful relationship I have with one child um, is non-existent at this point. So um, that is part of parental alienation that they align with the abuser mm -hmm. and um but i have hope that in their journey they will see the truth for what it really is and realize how it has impacted them and their decisions you know i just all i can do is pray and hope and and send out uh from my soul to their soul goodness and love um the the other is uh, doing whatever they can to make sense of it all, trying to maintain a relationship with both and, and learning to, to be their own person. Oftentimes the abusers create dependency situations with the children. Yeah. Um, I'm fortunate with this other child that um, for, for whatever reason, they they see the truth they don't want to necessarily deal with it but they see they see the truth but it's done a number on um their ability to hold jobs to you know uh, feel good about themselves that kind of thing to be financially independent yeah. but i i just have hope i have hope that you know the the truth prevails and that in their own journey, they will find th that they'll understand more what happened. And as they get older and they start researching this and maybe they even see their mom, you know, they might check out my website and they might see some of these conversations yeah. and writings. It might open up their mind that, that I am not the parent that's spreading evil and negativity. I'm only spreading goodness and love and awareness. And then that might connect them to other people who are adult, you know, children mm. of abuse situations. And they might, you know, be able to get resonate with some other people's stories and, and it might validate their experiences and help them. But I just have, I have hope that, you know, that goodness will prevail. You know, it's very sad for me personally to live life without one of my children, but you know, the alienation, the real alienation, even though it was worked on for years, the, the real estrangement separation didn't happen until the twenties. Mm -hmm. So they have loads of experience with, uh, who I am and how I was as a mom. I feel very good about who I was as a parent. And then I was a little obsessive with taking photos and making scrapbooks and documenting things mm -hmm. so that they have physical proof of, yeah. wait, you know, looking at this picture doesn't really add up what this other parent is saying. Mm -hmm. And so they have to put it together. Unfortunately, the abusers oftentimes 
throw away pictures, you know, they tear out you and only keep them. Um, but there's enough, there's enough out there that, um, that they should be able to discern and know the truth. But, but sometimes maybe those pictures can help realize, wait, it wasn't all so bad, you know, uh, that, that maybe I was lied to, you know, and, and told a false story. Yeah. But like I said, you know, we all have our journeys. It took me so long to come to the realization of what happened to me as mm -hmm. an basically intelligent adult mm -hmm. that I'm sure it's going to take, um, you know, time for them. Plus they're busy trying to make it on their own and live yeah. their life and, and discover who they are and pursue their passions. Yeah, it does take time. Everything takes time. And yeah. so something that we should always have is hope within yes. us. Yes. Uh, even in my book, it, uh, it talks about uh, everything taking time. I mean, yes. especially the, that good which you so desire, it doesn't happen in a day. It's like a tree that grows and you have to wait for it to flower and then bring forth fruit for the fruit to ripen. I mean, that's the patience that we should have, uh, uh, keeping the hope for a better that, that is actually an amazing analogy. Um, on our property, we have planted over 25 fruit trees yeah. and we bought them, you know, as big as and mature as they could be. But mm -hmm. every day we're watching, you know, the mango trees and the avocado trees and we're seeing that it's flowering and it's getting bigger and we're waiting for the fruit. And then we, with some of them, we're getting some fruit. And, you know, so yes, it is a process, um, but the journey can be beautiful and it doesn't have to be a terrible journey. It can be mm -hmm. a positive journey of hopefulness. Yeah, uh, yeah, sure, exactly. Uh, talking about the signs once again. So yeah. I believe that, uh, or rather, but you'll have maybe to explain that to us better. I believe then that uh, the signs that are there are not only to warn us again as to the bad things, but also some signs, and I think we covered that a bit in the beginning, that we have signs to show us some good things coming ahead and signs right. to show us a, a, a way to get out from bad situations, from happenings that are not positive in our lives. I think we have that, the, those two sides of the signs. Right, and, and th that provides reassurance, but it also helps us get in tune with our own intuition. We need to listen to our own little voice in our head yeah. or in our heart mm -hmm. um, because intuition and gut feelings um, could be signs um, that are warning us, but also reassuring us that we're on the right path. Yeah, that's wonderful. So beautiful, beautiful. So we are very glad to have you here in this show, Book Talk, and uh, thank you very much for sharing us uh, with us all about your book, God Came to My Garage Sale. And uh, we are just about to sum up the show. We would like you to tell us about the summary or something that you'd like us not to leave without. Well, I'll tell you, thank you also for having me on your show. And I resonate with you as a person mm -hmm. and, and with your mission and, yeah, and the you. efforts that you're putting forth because you are reaching thousands of people with your podcast and with your books with such a good message. So yeah. thank you for including me on this journey. Uh, but thank I you. guess the, the message I would leave is um, try to stay hopeful yeah. And realize that we all have challenges, mm -hmm. but we all have a choice on how to respond to them. And if you choose goodness mm -hmm. and love and honesty yeah. and compassion, mm -hmm. that you will be more fulfilled and doors will open up for you and you will be able to connect with other like-minded people and surround yourself with positivity. Yeah, thank you very much. And I agree with you that is all divine because uh, when yeah. I can, I have a story to tell, when I came to write my book, I divinely got connected to some authors that were doing it. The one of them is George, the other one is uh, John Asol who was in our life, I believe he's still watching us. 
And uh, these things just came to be, and they made me write my book within two months and publish it. Right, so, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so you are a living testament that really yeah. when you are ready, mm -hmm. you know, at, you'll get all the tools that you need yeah. to, to do what mission that you need to have. And it is divinely inspired. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. So we still continue with the journey. And uh, yes, thank you very much, uh, Marni, for being with us on this show. We really appreciate it. And thank you everyone who has watched us live and those who are going to watch us uh, uh, later, the recorded version on Facebook and also on YouTube. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, please let's keep the faith, let's keep hoping and let's be good always. Every possible opportunity, let's continue to be good every single time. Bye for now, Definitely. everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Time. Bye. Thank